Yo, how's everybody doing? It's the Hockey Regime here, and today I'm coming at you guys with another 2017-2018 NFL roster breakdown. This time taking a look at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers of the NFC South, the second team I've done in the NFC South thus far within these roster breakdown videos. And the Buccaneers are probably the team that is the most on the rise out of all the teams in the NFC South with going uh, or going 9-7 and seven last year and playing pretty solid. And the one funny thing about this team is it seems like in so many categories they were in the middle of the pack and they were basically in the middle of the pack last year as well in terms of their record, finishing 9-7, and seven, almost 8-8, eight and eight, almost just 500. It almost just seemed like everything was in the middle for Tampa Bay and they just need to take it up one more notch uh, to make the playoffs. And we start at the quarterback position right here. You got Ryan Fitzpatrick as a backup and Griffin to Jameis Winston. And Jameis Winston threw for 29 touchdown passes, I believe, last year. Um, and, <clears throat> excuse me, 28, excuse me, 28 touchdown passes and 18 interceptions. Um, and a completion percentage of 60.8, throwing for over 4,000 yards. And not a horrible year at all for James Winston. Um, not too bad. I think that, you know, again, they were in the top half of the league in, in terms of passing touchdowns at 28 right there. And they add Deshaun Jackson. We'll get into that a little bit later. But, you know, James Winston's really kind of uh, developed as, as a young guy, you know, into a pretty good player. Obviously, I think the, probably one of the bigger problems with him is that he has a tendency to force balls when he doesn't need to, and that'll probably fix itself eventually. Uh, I think because he has such, you know, incredible throw power, and, and I'm using the Madden term, but a great arm strength, and he can get the ball there in, in such a hurry, sometimes that's to his detriment. You know, he forces balls at times, but he's really developing into a great player for Tampa Bay and obviously is their future. At the halfback position, got Doug Martin, Charles Sims, Jaquiz Rogers, McNichols, and Barber. And recently there was an article about Blake, Sim Blake Sims being uh, the guy that won't be in the backfield for this team in the future, which isn't too big of a deal because you have Doug Martin, Sims, and Rogers. And Doug Martin is, is a guy that if he can stay healthy, um, he's definitely going to be effective for this organization as time goes on. Uh, but he's just, you know... He, he didn't have a great year last year. Didn't even average three yards a carry. Only played eight games. Rodgers had to come in. Actually played decent, I thought. You know, average over four yards a carry. Um, and he was a guy in fantasy that people were trying to pick up. And then uh, Sims played seven games and is more of a uh, receiving back. So um, you got to keep that in mind. So, you know, I think running the football was probably not the strong point for Tampa Bay last year. But I think in order for them to win more games, they're going to need to get that run game going on a greater uh, consistent basis. Now we look at the receiving core. And this is what a lot of people are really excited about, uh, uh, Tampa Bay fans, that is, because you have Mike Evans, who is uh, likely a top five receiver in the league. Um, it might be, you know, a little high, a little low, depending on how you think, but uh, he's still phenomenal. Deshaun Jackson, they pick up um, off of a free agency, I'm pretty sure. And Adam Humphreys is actually a really good a slot receiver, in my personal opinion. Um, he really started to, to show out last year. 55 receptions for 600 yards and two touchdown grabs. Uh, but Mike Evans was phenomenal. 1,300 yards, 12 touchdown passes, and was a Pro Bowl player last year. So uh, we know how good he has been. And you add Deshaun Jackson for some speed. You got Chris Godwin, Josh Huff, Martino, Diet Jr. You got some options behind them. But those three right there, I think, are really solid options for Jameis Winston um, at any point in the game. They just, I think most of those guys, or those three guys, have, you know, really good hands. And, you know, Mike Evans was just so overutilized. Um, in terms of you know pure targets, 173 targets last year is incredible. Um, so it'll be good to get another guy in the field um, that can consistently play because I think they try to get things going with Vincent Jackson, but playing only five games, uh, just not the factor that I think they thought he was going to be. Cameron Brait and OJ Howard lead the way at the tight end position along with Stalker at the bottom right there. They draft OJ Howard out of the University of Alabama, one of the, if not the best tight end in college football last year. And Cameron Brait played very well last year, um, had eight touchdown grabs, 57 receptions, 660 yards, was second on the team in receptions, you know, ahead of any other receiver aside from Mike Evans, obviously, um, played 15 games, um, just had a great year. And you add OJ Howard, who's just a more athletic version, arguably, in a little bit of a bigger frame. And those two guys can do, you know, wonders for them. It's funny. I think that a lot of people thought Austin Sperry and Jenkins was going to add to the uh, trees that they had in Vincent Jackson and Mike Evans, but it turns out Vincent Jackson leaves. They, Cameron Brait uh, decides to show up as a player that can be a great contributor, and now they draft OJ Howard. So they got a new trio of big men in Brait, Howard, and Mike Evans. We look at the offensive line right here. You got Dotson right tackle. I passed over JR Sweezy, a former Seahawk, um, <clears throat> Ali Marpet at center, James Stone, and Donovan Smith. Now, 
Personally, again, offensive line units are, are really hard to analyze. But let's look at, look at the Madden range. You got 74, 77 pass block and run block, respectively, 75, 78 with James Stone right there. J.R. Sweezy actually was a guy that I did. You know, Ali Marpet looks like their best offensive lineman. But J.R. Smith or J.R. Sweezy was a guy that I thought was not a bad player with Seattle, really, but ended up signing with uh, Tampa Bay. I haven't, you know, focused on how he's been doing in Tampa Bay, um, but in Seattle, he was a great pulling guard. I don't know how he's utilized there. Uh, in Tampa Bay and then you got Dawson at right tackle so um, again a lot of the offensive line units I, if, if Tampa Bay Buccaneers fans want to give any input on that in the comment section please do um, because I think it'll help everybody else uh, kind of analyze how they're going to do in the future because based on overalls they're still better they're still better than my Seahawks and my Seahawks made the playoffs so Tampa Bay definitely has a shot uh, with a better arguably a better receiving quarter than my Seahawks so uh, we look at the defensive unit and I was actually kind of surprised that the defense didn't um you know not allow more points or, or you know you know what i'm saying they didn't stop people from scoring as much as i thought they did i thought that they were one of the best teams in the league in terms of um points you know score or defensive scoring um you got golston johnson and Lab lambert right there at left end and in terms of uh the pass rush numbers and sacks for this team in 2016 2017 pretty balanced and nobody really uh stood out that much you have Ayers and Gerald McCoy leading the way at six and a half right here as we look at the right end position. Speaking of Ayers, you got Noah Spence backing him up, by the way, and Smith uh, and Russell right there. Um, Noah Spence was second on the team in five and a half sacks and a very young player. Um, and then it kind of moves on down the line from there. So um, obviously, you'll see once we get to their best player on defense, arguably, uh, where the most sacks come from. But Ayers and um, on the other side of the, or you have you have Noah Spence and Ayers both contributing um, to the biggest sack numbers that they had. I'm kind of surprised that uh, Smith didn't at all. I, I thought that he would have um, a little bit more, but I guess it, it was just they just don't utilize him that much or as much. Um, and Golston, kind of surprised Golston didn't get a bunch, but he got some, um, so he he was still a contributor there. And this is really a disruptive defensive line, especially when I saw them play against my Seahawks. These guys were all over the place like just destroying us it was disgusting and then you got chris baker mcdonald at silica backing up their best defensive player which i think a lot of buccaneer fans probably could agree on as he was their uh only pro bowler on defense last year and that is gerald mccoy and mccoy led the team in sacks six and a half tied with robert ayers and is still a great player for this team and and, and really you know it, it's a rare it's really kind of a rarity to have a guy from oklahoma be as great as Gerald McCoy is, but every once in a while you'll find one, and he's one of them. Um, and he's just been a great player for Tampa Bay his entire career. Um, and he's going to be about, I think he'll be about 29 next year. So he's getting a little bit older, but still will be a great factor for this team. And, and Tampa Bay's really kind of uh, risen from the ashes. They really weren't a good team in the past couple of years, and they've really started, you know, going over 500 is a big step in the right direction for them. And uh, they're looking to make the playoffs. So on the outside linebacker spot, again, this is going to hurt them having a player from Oklahoma, Devontae Bond. Um, you know, it, it is what it is. Sometimes you just you run out of ideas. You don't know um, who's available to pick up. Uh, but they just they just kind of had to go with the flow and just kind of had to pick up a guy off the off the streets. I'm pretty certain. Um, so that's just kind of what they had to do right there with Bond. Uh, you know, they give him a nice 70 zone coverage. So, you know, he might be able to cover a couple players every once in a blue moon. Uh, but that's just kind of how it is. You know, every defense is going to have their holes. Uh, <laughs> we'll see how Bond and Lynch do. Uh, but in all serious, I have no idea how either of these guys will contribute to the team. I haven't seen either of them play, but I do have seen Quan Alexander play. And he's kind of risen up out of nowhere. It's kind of funny. He's such a young player. Had 108 tackles last year for this team three sacks a forced fumble an interception played all 16 games started all 16 games and had a great year at such a young age out of LSU um and Quan Alexander you know he had this story about how I think his brother died during a game um and, and that was kind of you know an emotional moment for a lot of people and in, in the media especially they made a big deal out of it uh, and he really but it, it wasn't even like a thing about making it wasn't even like a story about where this is just this one random player like he ended up being a good player um after that so it's just kind of funny looking back on it and you have levante david and levante david just speaking in madden terms uh david actually had five sacks last year which is kind of surprising he must have been a big blitzer and four forced fumbles wow i uh, did not think he was the guy that would um be uh pass rushing but i'm assuming he was just blitzing um but levante david in madden has been a guy that has incredible uh, zone coverage rating so don't know how that's translated over the years i think it's gone a little bit 
uh, farther down. I don't think it's been quite as high as it has in the past. But uh, regardless, we move on to the defensive secondary where you have Brent Grimes, Vernon Hargreaves. Uh, I'm not going to try and pronounce the third cornerback's name. Cody Riggs, I believe, and uh, Robinson McLean and Elliott. So those are the cornerbacks for Tampa Bay. In terms of the interception numbers for this team, Brent Grimes actually did lead the team with four picks last year. And the next cornerback that comes close is Vernon Hargreaves with one. Now Hargreaves is extraordinarily young. Grimes is getting a little bit older. So um, a little bit of a drop off right there. Don't know how the secondary will do. I think Buckingham, I would really like to hear what any Tampa Bay Buccaneer fans out there think about their cornerback situation. Because I just, I, if I was looking at this from the outside looking in, which I am obviously, I would say that their cornerbacks are probably not the strong suit of the defense. I think that front seven is definitely the strong suit. Uh, although we haven't looked at their safeties yet, I think that front seven definitely is, is probably what you know Buccaneer fans are more excited about. And you look at the coverage ratings right there, um, the zone coverage is a little bit higher in their favor, except Riggs had nice man coverage. Um, you could run some man with Hargreaves, Grimes, and Riggs looks like, and zone basically if you want a more balanced version of everybody else. Uh, but Grimes used to be really good, but he's getting a little bit older. Kind of surprised he's still their number one guy, but he must still, you know, be a contributor. I don't know, man. He, he he's a he was a short dude. I remember everybody I think always remembers his, his one-handed interception against Calvin Johnson, or maybe it was two hands, but it was it was insanity. I think it was one hand, and that was crazy. And he's still playing, so props to him. You know, more power to him. Uh, you look at Keith Tandy and Chris Conti. Uh, Chris Conti, by the way, NYK at 31's least favorite safety in the NFL, and then Keith Tandy right there. Had four interceptions last year. Uh, played pretty well, only having four interceptions uh, is pretty solid for a guy that doesn't look like he doesn't even start that much for this team. Um, but I think it looks like he'll get the start now. Um, as you know, I don't know why they would start Chris Conti ahead of him, but I guess some people see something in him. Uh, give him 78 zone coverage in game, 83 pursuit, and a 68 tackle rating. So um, that basically will, will finish off the free safety position and uh, we'll go on to the strong safety position here in a second and you know what's interesting now is because I think there was actually a player uh, I think that yeah Bradley McDougal I think Bradley McDougal actually is in Seattle at the moment which is uh, really funny as we look at JJ Wilcox and Justin Evans at the strong safety spot Justin Evans was really actually impressive especially for a guy out of A&M um, in college and uh, you know he should be he might be a contributor for this team in the future JJ Wilcox for Dallas not known as a guy in coverage but a guy that can bring the you know bring the boom a little bit can definitely hit some guys I saw him play in Dallas um, and you know they liked him so you know he's gone obviously from there now so he may be able to contribute a little bit um, in terms of coverage they give him 80 coverage so maybe he's a little bit better in zone than I thought I know they did use Barry Church as a guy in the box but Wilcox seems like more of a hitter to me um, than anything else I'll see, we'll see if they use him in coverage a lot. Um, I'd kind of be surprised if they do, but um, it just depends. Sometimes some guys can actually just, you know, they can still play coverage even if they're known as hitters. Uh, Nick Folk, though, at the kicking spot, or the kicker spot, and you got 93 kick power right there, 87 kick accuracy for Nick Folk, the veteran kicker. Robert Aguayo, they spent a, a, a second-round draft pick, I believe, on Aguayo, and he just hasn't panned out, I believe, the way they wanted to, and I just passed over the punter to top everything off so that will be the conclusion of the video hopefully you guys enjoyed you know make sure to subscribe to the channel for more 2017 2018 nfl roster breakdowns only two more to go the carolina panthers and the atlanta falcons to finish out the nfc south and this year's version or this year's series of the 2017 2018 nfl roster breakdown videos but once again hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and yep thanks for watching